The dream started very early for Millie Hughes Fulford. I would wake up at six in the morning, I would go watch television, the reruns of Buck Rogers. Uh, Wilma Deering was the pilot at, on Buck Rogers, and uh, she would land the spacecraft, and so that was the beginning of my thinking that I could go into space. And this was at the very beginning of television, like in the early 50s. And I grew up thinking that I could be a, a, a space cadet person, and, and it happened. The UCSF professor of biochemistry and biophysics eventually became the first female scientist to go into outer space. Two, one, zero, all engines running. But that journey was more difficult than she had ever imagined. I realized when I was 16 that women weren't going into space, but I figured that I would prepare myself, uh, like Lincoln, in case my chance might come. And I was very um, adamant about being in science, knowing what I wanted. And when I saw that they were accepting applications for, for women, I, I put my name in as one of the candidates. Two, one, ignition and liftoff of Columbia on the first dedicated medical research flight. Making history, her opportunity arrived in 1991. Well, you're on shuttle, so that means you are laying on your back on the seat, and you're waiting for the solid boosters to fire, and they fire, and you're just grinning your head off because you know you're going to go into space. And the thrill of knowing that you're going to orbit and getting into orbit, suddenly you insert into orbit, and everything kind of floats up, and, and you know you're in zero gravity. And uh, it was marvelous. It was a marvelous feeling, and it was a dream come true. Commercial space travel is becoming more popular and more affordable. In the next decade, it won't be so expensive to take an a intercontinental ballistic flight from, say, L.A. to uh, Australia. Companies like Virgin Galactic are now accepting suborbital flight reservations for a price tag of $200,000. I, I think you have to say, do I want to do this in my life? And if you do, you should do it. Research out of UCSF and the San Francisco VA Medical Center suggests doctors should become more familiar with how to screen patients for space travel. Going back to that young girl in Texas, I, I, we're late to the party as far as I'm concerned. We should have been here a lot earlier. I, I think it's a marvelous time in history. The seed for space travel was planted early on for Dr. Hughes Fulford, thanks to Hollywood's imagination. And I, I, I think that every young child with a dream, should, the parent should really encourage the dream because it will happen for them. Reporting for UCSF News, I'm Leland Kim.